I'm just out on a morning walk and forage. I'm standing in a little line of, it's like a little secret track of apple trees and there's hawthorn and blackthorn that's nearly finished and a little bit further on around the corner I'm going to forage for nettles and I noticed on the patch that there was loads of other things there were some white dead nettles and um, some ground ivy all of which is so healthy you know mother nature is gifting all of these green allies for our they're not just for us it's for nature but we can harness the energies of them um, and what I do I think I've mentioned this before by way of thanks is I've got my litter picker now is pick up any crap and litter that I see on my travels so already I've got a crisp packet and a bottle I can hear all the baby birds as well it's like everything is waking up as much as I say I'm an autumn witch and I love autumn this time of year it's a dodgy <laughs> dodgy um, blackberry trailer nearly had me that would have been um, you've been frame moment uh, yeah, as much as I'm an autumn witch and I love the autumn, I love the spring. Every season, actually, it's that cyclical thing. Um, I've been doing a manifesting course with my friend and Welsh witch um, and coach, Rachel Hughes-Edwards. Do give her a check out. I'm going to um, put the link in this video, which I shall probably put up on YouTube. I've just started it, really, not knowing... Um, what I'm doing but I just felt the urge to do it. I'm going to do some qigong in my little um, sacred grove. I've had a buzzard and now I've got a kite flying overhead and I just I nearly didn't come out. I've got so wrapped up with working on my website, sharing all my green offerings, um, you know one of my, my happy places pottering in my kitchen I'm going to sit down now. I'm in my little, what I call my sacred triangle. Um, I'm going to do some qigong in a minute. Yeah, that is my happy place. You know, working on um, posting Instagram posts and things for the business. And I keep being saying, oh, wait, I must come out for a walk. I must come out for a walk. And actually, when I'm out here, this is my happy place. You just forget. We lose our connection with nature so easily. And, you know, and I feel because I'm out in my garden, I'm foraging for cleavers and I'm picking nettles there, but getting in the wood, you know, being in the elements, that's where it's at. That's where our connection is. And I forget that, well, I don't forget, but it's easy to forget. And so I can really understand, you know, when you've got mental health problems, anxiety, it's easy to just stay in, you know, scrolling, cooking baking you know doing all that stuff that you love but actually get out get out in nature and feel it just you know and and not just to walk around the block you know get out and actually get amongst some trees um oh yeah i've seen so the kite is just above me now just floating over there um i've heard and seen a deer a hare scuttled off in the bushes and it's not even early morning, I think it's gone nine o'clock, which um, is still really quiet here in the wood. It's amazing how it's dried up, so I'm able to now walk on all the paths that were absolutely sodden and flooded. So I'm gonna do my Qigong practice now, and then I'm gonna have a little bit of a forage uh, for some things to take home and make into an infusion. And um, I will share that with you as well. So I realised that I'd started talking about the manifesting course I'd been doing and I hadn't um, explained why I was talking about that. And really, being out in nature, it was just that feeling of connectedness. Um, she was teaching me about the 12 universal laws. Now, manifesting is something that I've done for a long time and, you know, we always say in this game, we can never know everything. We never finish learning. And I'd never heard of the 12 universal laws. So it was fascinating to work through them 
and knowing that I'd not heard of them or knew them, but actually I did. We are all connected. You know, the first law is the law of oneness. And they all weave in, and that you might know them by different names even, but they are fundamental and scientific um, laws, standards, noticing ways of being, how we can just be more connected. And I don't know if I'm even gonna quote it right, sort of law of polarity um, is, is all about kind of opposites. But I see that, and also I always think you interpret things how they feel right for you. So the law of opposites is, for me, this is feeding my soul, I am going within, and yet I'm also being without and connecting with nature, which is a part of me. And then I go into the law of oneness, and yeah, gratitude. I feel so happy for being out here and grateful or appreciative seeing that kite as it circled right over my head and as I was filming it taking photos and then doing my qigong you know it was right above me and that felt really connected and it really brought an inner smile to me and I thought if I hadn't have come out here I wouldn't be feeling any of this or experiencing it so yeah just getting out there and noticing things and feeling that connection to nature, especially now in spring. You know, with the energies, the sap is rising. You can probably hear the birds singing in the background. The bees are all over the place, all over the blossom. And it's just so fulfilling, I guess, is the, maybe the word for me. I don't know, we all use different words to describe different things, don't we? Um, yeah, so. I think I explained where I was going with that manifesting course, <laughs> but if you want to know more, um, contact her. Because I know that since doing this with her, I have felt even more connection, even more joy, even more gratitude. Gosh, the sun's coming out now, so now it's getting really warm. Might even be a sandal day. Right, I'm nearly at the nettle patch now. So here I am at my nettle foraging place. I have to spin around so you can see it. And there's so much here. I can you see how the, this is spring. The weather's gone from being really warm and lovely to now whipping up a wind and a bit grey. So I hope it's um, recording okay. Uh, so here we've got patches of, and everything's here, white nettle, um, stinging nettle, ground ivy, dandelions, so I'm going to have a good forage and I've actually got my gloves on for this because um, I'm going to pick quite a few nettles. Uh, I'm going to flip them now. So here's a little, little basket and here we've got that this is ground ivy. These are nettles. Obviously when I forage I'm going to be careful to shake off the bugs. Um, we've got daisies and dandelions. I'm probably not going to pick these ones because they're right on the edge. I always want to avoid anything that might have been uh, weed on. So foraging for nettles is just a case of coming in. This time of year you're just going to pick the top, top few leaves and pop them in your basket. I'm going to open that out in a minute and get the handles out. Dead nettles. Again, they're great um, a source of nectar and food for all sorts of different insects which then feeds all sorts of different birds uh, so I'll only pick that and I won't pick loads um, and I can't remember which species but there's a certain species of butterfly which love white dead nettle I think they call these the flowers are called fairy slippers Oh yeah, look at them. That's probably my, my little slippers. So I'm just going to pick a selection to take home and make a nice tea and an infusion. So I will put them in my cafetiere um, and I will probably video that when I get home. So what I've done is work along the edge, never over forage from one area. These dandelions would be great in the wood. I mean, you know, I grow them on my lawn, so they're the best ones to have. 
and I just come in and pick. And then I do, if I'm not foraging loads or if I'm just picking a few nettles, I just come in and you can quite easily pick them. God, sorry about my nails. I um, coloured the hair yesterday and uh, they're all stained purple. It's got pans. So yeah, you can just come in and pick them like that. You might get a little bit stung, but I think that's part of it. That's part of connecting with the nettle, her energy, and actually it's supposed to be quite good for arthritis. There are loads of ladybirds all over the nettles at the moment, which is really great. I'm just gonna come along. I think this is marshmallow. Really nice big leaves. That's the good thing about all the rain that we've had. It has made everything really abundant. Here's a little bit of purple nettle, purple dead nettle. It looks a bit like the ground ivy, but it's quite different. Much paler flowers, different leaf. Here's some more purple dead nettle. It's much taller than um, ground ivy. Uh, Carly Clinton's in the name. It does grow amongst nettles. This would be where I wouldn't forage from. From the edge of fields. Because they'll be sprayed with pesticides, um, plus little clumps of dandelion like this, it's prime dogwee area. So if it wasn't for the pesticides, I wouldn't um, yeah, I'd be wary about the, the dogwee. Although I'm sure in my time I have eaten quite a lot of uh, dogwee covered plants. Always wash things when you get home. Uh, here's our famous Carlington hangers. And hopefully over the wind, you can hear the skylarks. This field is amazing for skylark activity. And within the next few years, they're going to be building here. So all of this, all of that, all of the fields, as far as you can see back there, and this is going to be houses. Just wanted to show you this. This is something called Jack by the Hedge. Never seen it growing here before. Um, there it is with, let me just check, yep, a load of cleavers. So this is part of the mm, onion, garlic family. Has, the leaves have a really garlicky taste, so you can forage this and pop it in your salad. This one is Shepherd's Purse. This was a massive ally to me um, when I was uh, going through the worst of my perimenopause and um, yeah, really good for stopping bleeding. It's a really good tonifier, astringent. Um, there are some other words that I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, amazing stuff so called because of the little purse shaped seed pods on it. So before I get in the house and make my tea and infusion I thought I'd show you what's going on in my own garden apart from a stack of forget-me-nots. Here is lemon balm which grows in abundance um, makes a really lovely addition to a tea really antiviral, antifungal. Uh, what else have we got? Big clumps of parsley. All of my veggies and things growing. Berries. Plenty of cleavers. So I shall forage some out of my own garden. When you get let these things go wild, cherry blossom, in your own patch, you know that they're totally organic. They've not been um, weed on. Here we've got my mugwort patch, um, bluebells, dandelions, honesty, there's all sorts of things growing in there. I've got some yarrow kicking about somewhere. So in to make the infusion. So here we are back home, here's my little hall, if we kind of go through it you can see we've got nettles some cleavers, 
a bit of nettle root there. And usually I plant them, but I've put quite a lot in the garden this year, so I'm actually going to get the benefit of the nettle root. Um, you can see there's the purple dead nettle, some dandelions. I've got my lemon balm in there. Here is the difference between this is ground ivy and this is purple dead nettle. So you can see, that though they're really similar shaped flowers, and I think, if I'm gonna check the stem, yeah, they're both members of the mint family, technically. And you can tell that because they have, the stem is like square. It has little edges on it, rather than being completely round and smooth. Uh, the purple dead nettle grows a lot taller than the ground ivy. But they all have amazing benefits. Look how vibrant and green and golden, obviously, with the dandelions they are. So we're going to make the tea in and the infusion and extract all of those properties. But I'm going to give them a good wash first and just let them sit here for a few minutes to let any bugs and critters and insects escape. I've already had a spider that I've had to release outside. So here I am with my nice big cafetiere. It's a big 1500ml one. Oh no! Don't know if you saw that. An ant. Four ants. So I was, I'm always really careful to try and get all of them. So back again. <laughs> you saw me zooming in on that ant. Uh, there was a poor little ant. I always try my hardest to make sure that all the critters are off, to shake them off before I put them in the basket. And then that's why I forage with a basket so that um, any insects and things can fall through the holes. Um, and so out of that little lot, there was one spider and four ants. And I feel really sad about the ants because they can't get back to their, um, there's no good, you know, I've put them out in nature, at least they're all together, probably from the same colony. but. I don't know if ants join other colonies or not. I'm hoping that they do. Um, yeah, so everything's been sat for a bit. I've given it a good rinse. There's nothing in there now. The four ants are outside and the spider's outside. So I've boiled my kettle and all I'm going to do, you see that's quite full. That's a big old cafetiere. Um, when you're working with dried herbs, you use half the amount because they're more concentrated, but we're working with fresh. So as you can see, that is, really nearly full to the top but once we put all the boiling boiled water on it it will all start to compress down so I take it right up to the top and then just pop my oh god there's a spider got that out oh you just think I've left that sitting five minutes there's always going to be some critters in there that's when I then say we sacrifice them <laughs> to the gods and goddesses. That sounds awful, doesn't it? Anyway, that's foraging. That's real life. I really hate any critters being in there, but I've done my best. Spider's on the floor, so I'm going to go and find that in a minute. So the lid is on. I will let that brew for 15 minutes and then compress. Here is the resulting liquid 15 minutes later. Fairly pale, and then I'll see if I can show you later on what colour it is after it's infused for the day.